In the past, I've definitely been a bit too hard on American Dad, but in my defense, this show has some incredibly boring and uninspired episodes. I've always held American Dad to a higher standard than its older brother Family Guy because American Dad has the potential to do basically whatever they want. Family Guy is bogged down by a formula that makes a lot of the current episodes feel mindless and empty. But American Dad tends to take more risks than Family Guy when it comes to breaking out of the same old formula. Don't get me wrong, there are times when American Dad leans into its formula way too much, but I feel like the team behind the show actively tries to subvert expectations, for better or worse. Plus, American Dad has Roger, a character that can literally play whatever role they need for an episode with an outlandish premise. And seeing as I already tore apart American Dad's worst episode, American Fung, last year, I feel like it's time for me to revisit one of the best episodes of the whole series. And surprisingly, it's from a more recent season. It's no secret that American Dad, like most long-running adult animated shows, has been on a steady decline in ratings. The most recent season has fallen to a slightly below average quality standard consistently over the last four years. But the episode we're looking at today comes from the last season of American Dad to average a rating of 7.0 on IMDb. And it's also the second highest rated episode of the entire series. Today, I'll be talking about the last great episode of American Dad, Rabbit Ears. Now at first, Rabbit Ears seems like a pretty standard episode of American Dad. Stan finds an old TV on the side of the road and decides to take it home to share with his family, amongst a few other random pieces of garbage that he found. But Roger also found something on the side of the road, an old crib that inspires him to take on a new persona as a baby. Roger's baby persona immediately grabs the full attention of the entire Smith family, except for Stan, who insists that they all check out the TV that he found. The Smith family has no interest in the TV, however, and instead choose to focus all of their attention on Roger. So, Stan sets up the TV in the basement, and after messing with the rabbit ear antennas, a show pops up called Nighthawk's Hideaway, hosted by the charismatic Alistair Kovacs. Stan can't find any record of Nighthawk's hideaway on the internet, and after some more investigating, he finds out there is a group who meets to talk about this show. So he makes his way to one of their meetings. But when he arrives, only his neighbor Tuttle is there, and he looks horribly sleep deprived and unkempt. Tuttle explains that Nighthawk's hideaway only has one episode that is rerun over and over again but each rerun features slight differences, and Tuttle has kept a notebook cataloging all of the differences. Tuttle also explains that there used to be more people at these Nighthawk meetings, but one by one, people stopped showing up. Tuttle offers to team up with Stan to solve this mystery, but Stan has no interest in doing that and leaves the meeting. Stan arrives home and makes his way to the old TV to turn it off and move on from it but then he notices something in the background of a scene, Tuttle. Tuttle is somehow inside the TV show, and this pushes Stan into investigating the show and Tuttle further on his own. Now, already this episode is off to a great start. Not only has there been a few funny gags here and there, but this mystery is genuinely an interesting one. It feels like an episode of The Twilight Zone that's taking place within an episode of American Dad, and it works really well. The pacing is perfect up to this point, and the mystery surrounding the Nighthawks hideaway is eerie and creepy. Everything about this episode is flowing perfectly through the first act. It feels so focused and every scene serves a purpose for the larger mystery at play. There is little to no filler so far in this episode. It's just so perfect and lean. I just love this first act. Carrying on, Stan decides to investigate Tuttle's home to see what's going on. He breaks his way in and finds the notebook where Tuttle had cataloged all of the changes in the show. The last page Tuttle wrote on says in bold red ink, 
I must go in. Stan investigates Tuttle's TV set and it looks similar to his own, except there is static being projected out the back onto the wall. With Tuttle's notebook in hand, Stan runs back home and tries to show his family Nighthawk's hideaway, but the show is no longer playing. He tells them what he's seen, but they have no interest in the old TV and no interest in this mystery. Stan is left alone in the basement with the TV and Tuttle's notebook when the show comes back on. Stan tries to decipher Tuttle's notes. Watching the show for a long while, he adds notes to this notebook and sets up a conspiracy board trying to find out as much as he can about this mysterious show. It's unclear how long Stan stays down in the basement, but judging by the calendar leaning against his conspiracy board, he likely spent almost a month deciphering this cryptic show. Finally, Stan has reached the end of his rope when it comes to deciphering Nighthawk's hideaway. He feels like he's missing something, and then his eyes are once again drawn to the last note Tuttle left behind. I must go in. Stan takes off the back of the TV, and the same projection that was in Tuttle's house shoots out the back onto the wall. Stan reaches out, and his hand goes through the static into the wall, and then he jumps in. We see the intro of Nighthawk's Hideaway play as normal with an elevator door opening and Alistair Kovacs welcoming people to the show. Then it's revealed that Stan was in the elevator, and he's now in the show. He quickly makes his way over to Tuttle, whose memory is starting to fade. Stan is able to get Tuttle to snap out of it and remember who he is, and then Tuttle reveals that being in this show slowly makes you forget who you were before. Stan suggests escaping, but Tuttle says it's impossible. Another person who was sucked into the show, though, overhears their conversation, and as he begins remembering his previous life, he makes a break for the elevator to escape. But the doors are closed, and it comes time for a commercial break. All of the lights go out, and it is pitch black. And then, we hear the man who tried to escape being eaten by Alistair Kovacs. The lights come back on, and the show carries on as normal. Though now, Stan and Tuttle know just what's at stake. And that is the end of Act 2, another perfectly paced and executed chapter in this story. The way this episode is laid out is perfect for the kind of story being told. The B-plot of the episode about Roger being a baby only comes up a couple of times, leaving plenty of time for the A-plot to unfold in a way that doesn't feel rushed. The episode does a great job of making a really atmospheric and creepy mystery, and the stakes are about as high as they get. Stan and Tuttle are trapped within this TV show, and if they try to escape, Alistair Kovacs will eat them, so they have to play along. Alistair Kovacs' true nature is never fully explained, and that makes it way more creepy in my mind. He could be a demon, a supernatural entity, a ghost, a monster, it doesn't really matter, because it's never revealed. The villain is equally as mysterious as the show itself, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but this just works so perfectly. And on top of that, the episode is also pretty funny through this point. I love the shot of Stan and Tuttle right after the lights come back on, after the strange man was eaten. They're holding each other's hand and then quickly pull away from each other, and it's just a great, subtle visual gag that adds comedy to this scene without taking away from the stakes or the mystery at hand. This episode does occasionally take away from the creepy mystery to insert a quick joke, but those moments are few and far between. Up through this second act, I really feel that this episode is being executed perfectly within the framework of American Dad. Now, Tuttle and Stan understand what's at stake, and worst yet, Stan is beginning to forget his family entirely. They decide they need to try and escape, and they do this by jumping into the elevator as soon as the show begins its rerun. They make their way outside, hop into a car, and begin driving away. They make their way to what seems like the edge of the show, and hence the world, where a large fake wall is in the way blocking their path. Tuttle then spots a tree in the distance with a single green leaf on it, standing out from the rest of this black and white world. The two decide to follow the color, hoping that it will lead to their escape. 
and it seemingly does. The color slowly begins to seep its way back into the world, and I really love the way the show gradually reintroduced the color over just a couple of scenes. The two arrive back at Stan's house, and Stan invites Tuttle inside to relax with his family because he knows Tuttle has no one to go home to. The two enter Stan's house, but instead of being welcomed home, they're welcomed back to the Nighthawk's hideaway. Their escape attempt failed, and now Tuttle and Stan are seemingly stuck in this black and white world. We see a montage of the two slowly losing themselves to the show, but during a quick bit of product placement, Stan's memory is jumped by seeing a fondue maker, which just so happened to be one of the pieces of garbage he found along with the TV at the beginning of the episode. Stan manages to get Tuttle to remember as well by throwing the boiling fondue at him. But then, Alistair Kovacs shoves Stan into the wall and initiates a commercial break. Alistair begins to transform into some kind of monster, but lucky for Stan, the force of his head hitting the wall revealed the same static that brought himself and Tuttle into the show. The two quickly work together to create a larger hole with the static pouring through like water. Alistair begins charging them and attempting to eat them, but Stan and Tuttle narrowly escape, and Tuttle pulls the cord on the TV to trap Alistair Kovacs back inside. With the crisis seemingly averted, Stan returns to his family and Francine helps him get rid of the TV. But then, as soon as things are about to turn back to normal, the Smith family begins acting like characters on Nighthawk's hideaway. Stan realizes he hasn't actually escaped, he's just existing in the same show, but this time with his family. It's revealed that Stan is still on the TV in the basement, and Alistair Kovacs comes out of the shadows to do his signature sign-off. Another great episode so long, Nighthawks. And that is the American Dad episode titled rabbit ears. And after revisiting this episode, I think it's my favorite of the entire series. It's just so creepy and mysterious, but it never gives up the atmosphere it's built for the sake of cheap jokes. The mystery aspect of the episode works great, and there is still a lot left up to interpretation. Nighthawk's hideaway seemingly preys on lonely older men looking for a form of escapism. Tuttle has nothing and no one, so he is the perfect target, and Stan is isolated from his family because they are spending all of their time taking care of baby Roger. And while I don't think the episode is trying to say something all that deep, I think it succeeds at creating a creepy, mysterious episode that still has plenty of laughs on top of that. Hopefully the writers look back at the reception of this episode and lean into these more risky stories in the future, because if there were just a few more episodes of American Dad from the current seasons like Rabbit Ears, the show would be far easier to stomach. But as of right now, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully they write the ship, but I'm not fully confident given the track record over the last four years. But that's where I'm going to leave this episode for now. Thank you all very much for watching this video. If you have anything you want me to talk about in the future, just post it down in the comment section below. I also want to thank everyone for the support on the channel over the last few months. It's doing better than ever, and that is all thanks to you. I'm going to keep on putting out content like this as consistently as possible. Right now, it's just kind of flowing. I'm feeling pretty good about it, but you know, hiccups in the road and such in the future could come up. So we'll just have to wait and see. Right now though, I'm feeling great. I'm doing great. I like the content I'm making and I'm very, very grateful that so many of you are showing up for it. Once again, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to become a cow and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.